Excellent. Okay, good afternoon. Today is the eighth day of July. It's a new month and we are again embarking on another journey where we have two wonderful presenters, two startups, and they're both women and they are sharing with us their business and of course their journey. And at the end of their presentation, they're going to let us know what is it that we as a community can do to help them. We also have one expert panel with us. He is the wonderful, the um, well-known, very, very, very well-known, loved his food. I've eaten at his restaurant several times, Mr. Robert Chef Robbie Skeet we have with us. And we have our two presenters, and they are coming from Melly's Mix It Up and from Bee's Bar and Grill. So we both have ladies that are in the culinary industry doing eats and drinks, and we can't wait to hear what their presentation is about. Okay, so without further ado, we are going to start out with her as we do with all of our events. And I would like to call upon Miss Anita James to open up with her for us, please. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Let's all pray, please. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us all together again this Wednesday afternoon for another startup huddle session. Please take full control of our thoughts and our minds. Let the Holy Spirit peace cleanse our hearts. Fill us with camaraderie, wisdom. Help us to have a wonderful sitting here and help the presenters to benefit from this session we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry about that. Thank you so very much, Anita, um, for that opening prayer. At this point in time, um, we, are, we are going to do is to do some basic introduction as to what Startup Puddle St. Lucia is, and of course, introduce you to our team members. Okay, so Startup Puddle St. Lucia is an event that is hosted by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. It is a community focused and community based event where entrepreneurs, startups, that is um, three years and younger, we may go up to five years depending on your case, are able to present to the community sharing their business, sharing their story and their journey, and also sharing with us what is it that we can do to help them. If there is a particular need that they have, or if it is that they just want advice, you know, or feedback, you know, from us to let us know if they're on the right track. And of course, if they need connections, we provide them with connections and resources that they have just through networking with audience and also with our expert panel. Now, Startup Huddle St. Lucia is held on the second Wednesday of every month, and we begin at 5 and end at 6.30. That has been the time for a couple of months now, 5 to 6.30. We have two presenters. They present for six minutes, after which they are then engaged in Q&A with our expert panel. Then after that, they are engaged in Q&A with the audience. So yes, the audience will be permitted to ask their questions. If your audio is having issues, you can use the chat function. That is the chat box right there to the end. And you can post your questions there. And one of our team members will then read out your questions to our presenters. Okay. If you're able to use your audio and speak, you can unmute yourself after first, of course, alerting us either by a raise of hand or thumbs up. And then we will call upon you so that you can then first introduce yourself, the agents, your company that you represent, and then state your question so that the presenter can then respond. Okay. We do this for a few minutes and then we move into team announcements. After which we go into our second presenter who will then go again for six minutes, then Q&A with the expert panel. Then after that, Q&A with the audience. And then after that, we would have a couple of announcements from the audience. If you have anything for us, if not, then we move on to the agenda as you see there in the chat. Okay. So though our time is a bit off, this is the agenda that we are following. Okay. And of course you would have seen that our first presenter is um, coming from these bar and grill but we'll get to that before we do so i will then move over to introductions of the team members okay so i'm going to allow them to unmute themselves and then introduce as i call upon their names so let's start with michaela hello everyone buddy my name is michaela charles noel and i am sitting in here as the presenter Okay, we have Anita. Hi everyone, I'm Anita James, and what I do is review applications to present, to see that you meet the criteria. 
And we have Ronetta. Hi, everyone. My name is Ronetta Billy, and I am the coach for the presenters. So I get a chance to have a business idea before you. Just have a conversation to make it perfect for you today, just to prepare them. Awesome. And then we have Lisa. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Yad, and I am the project manager for Startup Puzzle and Lucia. Excellent. And last but not least, we have myself, Michelle and Samuel. I am your head organizer and leader of the Startup Puddle St. Lucia team. And the theme, which is consistent throughout all our events, unless we have some special occasion, is always educate, engage, and connect. And we do hashtag SHSL full caps whenever we share our events. So if in case you want to talk about us, you know, talk about your experience here, and of course, share any of our information, our posters and flyers, please use the hashtag caps SHSL. All right. And I'm now going to move on to Michaela so that she can introduce who our presenters are and also our expert panel. Michaela, take it away, please. Okay, so today, unfortunately, we have with us only Chef Robbie, and of course, he's sitting here with us again for the second time, and we are so very happy to have you here with us again. For the purpose of the audience, uh, Chef Robbie, or Robert, has a wealth of culinary experience and qualifications. Robert is the winner of numerous award, awards, including Chef of the Year, most artistic chef, among others. He's associated with the Culinary Institute of America, CIA, which gives him much gratification as an expert panel member at Startup Puzzle St. Lucia. He hopes to help young, young enterprising people in the industry springboard to success or to help improve their situation in life. So with no further ado, sorry, not with no further ado, he's not, um, I present to you our expert panelist, Chef Robert Robbie. Um, we are going to move right along, Michelle, with the first presenter, right? Yes, go ahead with the first presenter. Okay. All right. So today, Chef Mailika, sorry, not Mailika. But failure is an entrepreneurship, is an inter, entrepreneur. Oh, what's wrong with me today, man? But failure is an entrepreneur and the manager of Bees Bar and Grill. Before becoming an entrepreneur, she worked as a sales representative and administrative secretary for many years. This is where she developed a passion for serving and interacting with people. Bofelia is very passionate about her work and she wants to see all of her customers happy and satisfied. She enjoys cooking, but never once decided or saw it as a career. Baz, B, B, Bees Bar and Grill is a place where persons come to feel free and relaxed and at the same time can get something to eat while enjoying the ambience with some good entertainment and music. Please help me welcome to present Bofilia. Over to you, Bofilia. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I cannot hear them. Good afternoon. We can hear you. Good afternoon. I can hear you now. I'm sorry, I wasn't Good afternoon. Here. Do I go ahead and start it now? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Major. Yes, go ahead. I am Bethelia Sanson. I reside in the community of Fonsejac, and I've worked as a sales rep and administrative secretary for many years. I am now the owner of Biz Bar and Grill, which is located in the purely com agricultural community of Forceja. My location is very convenient because it's located near the main road. It is in the heart of Forceja and it's 
it, it is in close proximity to our main facilities such as the credit union, the church, the playing field. Growing up, I've always wanted to start my own business. I wanted to showcase to the world what I could have produced. Due to my passion for cooking and some hard work, I have started my own business and it is currently growing tremendously. I have earned a certificate in tourism and hospitality from the University of FAU online course. Presently, I am completing an online business course with Sodera. Bizbar and Grill can be contacted via social media platform, including WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram. My, my business can also be reached by direct call. My business has been able to provide employment within the community and is always willing to give back whenever we are called upon to do so. My business is customer oriented. We provide excellent customer service, which keep our customers satisfied and happy. And as a result, they keep coming back. In addition, we keep them happy by greeting them with warm-hearted. With warm-hearted, we keep them coming back and happy by greeting them warm-heartedly, interacting with them, offering them promotion during our festive season. We give back to our potential customer providing them with delicious meals, snacks, refreshment, gaming and entertainment. Our meals are always readily available, which makes it easier for pickup. By now you may be wondering what our mouthwatering meals are all about. Here are a list of my here are a list of them. Firstly, we have our chicken and beef burger, which is served with a spicy barbecue sauce. Then we have our stew pork, which is finger licking food. Also, we have barbecue pork with sous sky soups, rotis, chicken, fish, and pork meal. And one of our customer favorites, which is our pillow. Our target market are persons who are economically active, but we cater to everyone. We also extend our services for special events, functions, and due to businesses. My services are needed when my customers need to satisfy their craving, crunch, it, crunch their foods, and to feel relaxed and entertained after a hard days of work. For some form of entertainment while snacking on some tasty treats, stop at Biz Bar and Grill, where there is always something for everyone. Come on in, relax with us, and entertain while enjoying our tasty meals. I think. Is that the end of your presentation, Bethelia? Yes. Okay, awesome. Now you can you can keep the information on the screen. Um, your contact information. You can go back, um, or you can just go. You can keep your information on the screen so that we can take if your if your logo. Go back to your logo. My contact information. Go back okay. to your your logo. Excellent. That's it. Okay. There we go. There we go. So this is how you guys can get in touch with Cecilia to experience her wonderful cuisine, her eats and her drinks. So you can take down the information. Um, Bethelia, if you're able to, if you're able to, um, to also provide us with your Facebook page link, if you have it readily available, you can post that into the chat. So persons who are in the chat can have access to it if you have it, your, um, your Facebook um, page link. All right, so this is the end of Lothelia's presentation. So we'll now give it to Chef Robbie to go into his Q&A with Lothelia. Hello, hello Lothelia, how are you? Hello, Chef Robbie, how are you? How are you doing? Thanks. And how nervous, how nervous are you? Very. <laughs> 
you said you am. You worked in 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 what in what field first originally, and where and where did you work? As a sales representative and as a sales administrative. Yeah. Um, but where? I work what with thing? um Avis Carento as a uh, sales rep. I also work with another Carento, which is called um Enviroite Carento, or I serve as an administrative sales um secretary. Okay. And um, how did you get into, what, what made you, gave you the drive to go into culinary arts or into um, food and beverage, if I want to um, simplify it? After um, I lost my last job, it took me a while before I got another job, you know, after sending out application for such a long time. Um, I finally decided to, I needed the form of income, so I decided to, Start a small business, which I started from home. Um, I started with a small grocery shop, and whilst there, I would prepare a few eats to put out. Whilst customer come in to buy little groceries, they'll get a bite or something to eat. And then I realized the demand for the eats. I then move to the roadside, which was um, where I build a little shed. And with my cooler, I prepare my food from home and I'll carry it out to the road, um, by the roadside, which is not far from home. Is, the, and, is that, sorry for cutting you short, um, doing that, did you still maintain your little grocery shop? Pardon? Yes, I continue maintaining the grocery shop. So do you still have it? No. no. You branched away I, from While okay, by the roadside, I grew a little more where I, then I purchased a tent. Um, which got me into the bigger part of business. But then not too far after I purchased my tent to enter into the deeper part of business, um, a very good friend of mine informed me of um, a place which was vacant that I could have operated at, which is where I am presently. And okay. I decided to act upon it the, ne the, the next day. Okay. And, um, so I end up with her. And um, then I decided to go into deeper into the refreshment part, which is the bar part, and then I continued my food as usual. Okay, so your your food experience is just from home, your home cooking from your mom, your your yes, your my home cooking. Experience. I have a brother which is a chef. I learned okay. a lot from him and my mom. <laughs> so before going into into your little business, did you do any kind of consultancy with your brother, with anybody affiliated with the food and beverage industry? Um, yes, I did. I spoke with my brother mainly about it. The food part and, of things, um, I think. He had already experienced the passion I had for cooking and he gave me the hint so that I could have gone right. here. Cool. What about, what about the, the beverage part of things? Um, what type of beverages do you offer? Is it just the basic things like most bars or, uh, or do you have any cocktails that stand out or anything, um, anything, you, anything unique? Um, well, we do we do smoothies and milkshakes, and I'm planning on going into cocktails. Okay, so tell me something. Um, what would you say makes Bee's Bar and, and you know and Grill or restaurant and bar or whatever stand out? Stand stand out. You know something that that makes you stand out better than the rest. Is there anything? Do you have any competition in your community for starters uh, along along your lines? That is, um, yes, I do. There are competition, but I'm quite aware of the competition, and they don't affect me that much because we work hand in hand. We work along um, very well. Um, in terms of on the days they don't do it, they know that I always have it. They will ensure that whenever the customers are around, they get the eats from me for their customers. They'll always so contact me. So are they, are, they, are they within close proximity of you? Yes, yes. Okay, so you have competition, mm -hmm. and you're saying that you all, you all work in tandem with each other, you all complement each other, as opposed to competing with each other. Yes, that's, what, that's how we work. All right, that's interesting, then, because, I mean, competition is healthy, because mm -hmm. when, when, when there's competition, it, bring, it, bring, it brings the best out of you, because you have to step up your game, you have to do as well or better than your competition. You have to have, you know, improve your products or give better value for money or whatever. I mean, it's interesting that you should say that you all work hand in hand or you all work in tandem with each other 
and you all complement each other. So I yes. guess you all you all have the that community spirit in your yes, in, in your. Yeah. I am familiar with the area that you're speaking about because I, I worked at the Dara for nine years and I and Francais Jacques was a big part of my experience in Soufra. I know where the playing field is, I know where the church is, I I you know I well, Soufra was my other home for a long time and I have a lot of friends in Francais Jacques and okay. I used to go up I used to go up to the forest there a lot. So I'm kind of familiar with the area in which you're talking about. Um does your 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 establishment how classy would you say it is? is? Is it a classy place or is it a, a, a rustic kind of atmosphere? Is it a, like, you know, a, a classy cabaret? Is it a, a, something that you're proud of and it stands above the rest where the sit I, I don't know what the atmosphere of the place is like. Um, how, would you, how would you describe your place if you were to describe it to somebody who hasn't seen it? It's Take your time, don't be nervous. Don't be scared to boast it. And don't be scared to boast yourself or your place. <laughs> it is um it is it is in between classy and um how should I say it? In some way where anybody can come out, hang out, chill out. It is a welcoming environment. All right. Somewhere somebody comes in, there'll be it, 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 would, it, would, it be, it, would your place wow me if I walked in? Yeah, sure. It would. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, who are your customers? My customers are basically um, the economically active people. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean persons who are working. But due to um, COVID right now, Mm -hmm. my business is my customers are still um stretch out to every and anybody i i have i have extended my business to special events to persons with um um people with functions coming up from the business the business place themselves. okay great so you cater for function you cater for little functions also yes i do i do catering for how, how so Tell me some of the type of functions that you can cater for or you have catered for already. Okay, I have um, functions that I normally cater for. Parties, some weddings, first communions. Um, you having a, a business function. You want some treats. I do cater for this. I cater for the school. Sometimes the teachers are having a meeting. They want meals. They want some snacks. So things. Okay. I do cater for, I extend my services to them as well. Because I'm, I'm still in Fantastic. close proximity with the school as so well. So you, you, go, you go as far as doing, as doing wakes and everything? If somebody has a funeral and they want to... Yes, funeral as well. Out. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. All right then, great. Um, do you, do you, do you um, find the need to have to market your business? Or do you think that your business is so well located or placed that you can depend on walk-ins or on just everyday business just coming into you and depend on the customer? Your, your clientele in, within the community to sustain you or do you market to get more bring more business in? I do market to get more business however um, I solely depend on the community walk-ins and being that Fosse Jacques is um, an agricultural place and they are soon turned it into agro-processing place most of the place so you find a lot of um, persons uh, Travels in this area in terms of going to the waterfall, going to the forest. So I have mm -hmm. a lot of walking, so I have a lot of visitors, I have a lot of people stopping by, enjoying my meals and my refreshment. All right, great. What well, um, what about the the town of Soufre? Do you do you find do you think maybe there's a need for trying to drive in customers from the from from the village to come up to your business specifically because it's, a, it's such a cool spot or do you not see the need to market to the to Soufre? Do you have any? Oh, mm, what, I do, do you have lots of Soufre customers people? coming from Soufre, especially on a weekend. Yeah. On a weekend, we have, have lots of customers coming from Soufre, making their way to Bossage. Okay. And what are some of your advertising techniques? Do you have any flyers? Do you have any posters? Do you have any big signs um, along the road in Sufre? Do you have any, any visibility in the town of Sufre? No, I have no billboards 
to see along the time I was so free. What I use is my Instagram, my Facebook page. I use a lot of, I share a lot on my WhatsApp status. My sign is very visible. I wear logos with my, my hat, sometimes my shirt. Okay. okay. All right. That's all well and good, but um, there's this little expression that goes, uh, business of no signs is a sign of no business. So you need to keep that in mind a little bit. I think your sign is very vibrant. The, the, the color is, is, is vibrant. Um, you probably need to think about getting some sort of um, signage in the village of Sufra. Sufra. And, very good. I, yeah, I will take that into consideration. You also need to have signage on people coming into, into Fosse Jack, you know, at least about three or four strategic places whether it be from when they get to the Zeno area or when they get further up, they see it and they, and they progressively say, hey, we kind of in their mind, hey, we better, we better look to check this place out based on the signs that they've seen. They've seen, three, you know, it's sort of like leading, like when people put up balloons for a party. Yes, very true. Um, believe it or not, um, when, when, when people see very dynamic signs or like you have know, vibrant signs like you and they see two, three, four places, it's sort of draws them to it eventually even if they don't stop on their way to the forest or to wherever the destination is but at some point it's in their mind hey that's a watering hole that we maybe should check out at some point on on, on our on our journey into this village into Fosse Jack. okay yeah, probably, I totally yeah, agree. Well taken. i really really agree with what you're saying i think that's really good advice for Bertilia with such a beautiful bright sign um, so sorry to cut in, guys, but the Q and A uh, for that segment it's up. So I'm so so sorry, but again, that's where a personal networking can I, can will come I, in. The, can I stretch it out a little longer? Because we did stretch it out the last time a little a little bit longer. It's actually stretched but out. There, <laughs> there are a couple questions today. I wanted. A couple questions I wanted to ask her. Just quickly. Okay. So that's where when you go into the that is time. Yes. So when you when you go into the other segments, you will have a one on one with her. Right? Okay. Uh, All right. Actually, I actually stretched out the time. It's supposed to be six minutes. Okay, no but problem. Go on. Yes. All right. So now we're going to we're going to be ushered into the aspect of Q and A for the part. Not the participants, sorry, but for the persons who are here, um, this is your time. You could ask any question to Berthelia, or if you have any advice or suggestion as well, the floor is open. Just the floor is open to, to viewers. Just a couple of reminders, please. Uh, that is correct. Raise your hand or thumbs up to alert us, and then we can allow you to unmute yourself, and then of course you can introduce yourself where you're from and then your question. If you cannot um, use your audio, please use the chat to ask your questions, okay? We have no questions from the audience. I see Anita James. Am, am I, am I part of the audience? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're fine. Oh. <laughs> okay, but Anita James have a hands up. Cecilia, you can stop sharing your screen now. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, awesome. So now we can see everybody. Okay, great. So, can I ask my question now, please? Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, um, Bertilia. I'm really, really um, impressed with your presentation you. because I lived in Sufre myself for six years and I know it's a very quiet town, but you sound that you are, you sound like you are doing a rip roaring trade and I'm so very happy for you. What do you think that has um, contributed to you doing so well? And secondly, what are your challenges? Oh, don't tell me you don't know. What are your challenges? Um, what has really contributed to me doing so well is um, the hurdles I faced growing up. I, I really wanted to see the best for me. I wanted to see me earning my own money. I wanted to see 
me bringing the income into my family and making my family proud and happy. And I thought um, having my own business would be one of the ways that I could have really, really do this. In terms of challenges for the business, my biggest challenge, which is so difficult to talk about, I have not had many challenges, but there was one challenge that I really faced um, mid last year, which really set my business and me back, per se. Um, and this really shook me. It shook me in a way that I had to think and really know whether I will allow it to bring me down or should I rise above the situation. Um, I, in June last year, my business suffered a robbery where I lost um, my loved one in the, in the situation. This situation forced me to close for a few months. And um, after reopening, it was even harder because most customers had already drive away from the business because of what happened. But in some way or sense, in terms of marketing, promoting the business, I was able to pick up again um, a few months after open, reopening. So really and truly my challenges was getting my customer to feel comfortable again, feeling welcome in a business, making the environment what it used to be for them again. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Thanks. About her presentation or her business. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> Bophelia, what sets you apart? Because um, I'm sure you have competition in the Forcing Shark, but you said that um, a lot of your customers come from Sufre, right? So, what exactly is it that they're coming to get? at your place that probably they may not be able to get at in Sufre? Well, I must say it's my food. They really do come for the eats. Most persons who come, I would stop for eats. And I think uh, this really set me apart because in the business in Foster Shark, they, they don't really do food. They don't really do food on a regular basis. So, uh, um, when a customer comes at Biz Bang Grill to chill, to have a drink, uh, and they're not ready to go back home, they, always, they can always get something to eat, something to snack on. Okay, so what time do you close on an evening? I don't have a closing hour. So I think that's time one time of the good thing about it. I open all night. As long as my business has customer coming in, my business stays open. My doors are always open. Okay, so what, what time can they get, um, what's the latest time they can get food, actual food? Not like, do you do actual food in the evening and not just like yeah. chicken and bake and stuff like that? Okay, actual food would normally stop around somewhere like 10, 10 p.m. Okay, wow, that well, that's good because I've always wondered why restor why you cannot get like food to eat at this time of the night. You know, like when you're out, all you all you get is 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 fast food. You get a chicken and a bacon, and a, you know. But like sometimes people really want a meal at nine p.m. in the night. So that's so that's a great plus for you. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to say, oh, sorry, Ronita. Um, I just wanted to say, if nobody, if any, um, no other person from the audience doesn't have questions, and we still have time in this session, then maybe Chef probably could. Yes. I have a question for Bethelia. Hi, Bethelia. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me just ask a question really quickly. 
Um, I'm not sure whether you, you mentioned it or not, but what are your, your price ranges like um, for your meals? Because you said that um, you're open throughout and that is amazing. I've never heard a, a food establishment willing to stay open no matter how long it is. Once you have persons coming in, you will serve them. That's some serious dedication. So does that mean you have like round the clock staff? And if that's the case, um, does the price change after a certain time? Like, you know, they have late hours and the price changes. Do your prices change as well? No? No, we don't have. No, we don't have price changes. Our price stays standard as a standard price. Okay, so if I wanted to get a really good meal from these bar and grill, like, how much should I walk with, you know, for a really good filling meal? 50, between 15 and 20 dollars. 15 and 20? Okay, awesome. And in terms of like special events, um, do you do that as well in your establishment? Is it um, big enough to accommodate? Yes, I hold, I hold, I've held dances. I, <laughs> I rent the place for somebody who's having a first communion party or small birthday party. I, my business is open. It's, I have a very big wall. So I is normally host dance, right fundraising now. events. So are you sitting in right now? That's your establishment? Yes, that's a pool table at the back of me right wow, now. Wow, that is awesome. I do post competition. I have bingos. I have, I have done so many different things in here. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, that was my question. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Okay, so I'm assuming I might be the last question. I have a session. question. Well, Jack, I think Jacqueline had a question. Was it Jacqueline? Oh. I'm not uh, sure. Somebody had a question. I think it was Jacqueline, but I interjected. But but anyway, oh, me, I was go ahead. when you when you started talking. Hello. Hello. Yes, Hello. A quick um, question. When you have functions at the place, how does it affect your regular business hours? My regular business hours? When yeah, I have like, a function? Yeah. Is it a function of my own or function that I cater you rent to out the space. Let's say I rent out the place to somebody. Yes, yeah, you rent out the space. How does it affect your working customers and, and other clients? Um, it don't really affect my working customers. If I have a, a function at the place, you most times we have a time limit set, whether you start at such time and you end at such time. And within time frame, most times I would inform my customers that this place, there is a private function or there's something happening. But it's, if it's a function for everybody, it doesn't really affect my, my business per se. Okay. Okay, um, so just before we move into the other segment, Bethulia, thanks for sharing your story. Um, I can imagine how difficult that may have been to share that deep part of you and that traumatizing experience that you've had. Um, but I could clearly see that good came out of it. I know sometimes in the midst of something, you may not see the good. And I wouldn't wish what you went through on any other person but it really made something out of you. And I could see that you became more dedicated for you to go back and grab those customers wherever they went to and to make your business thrive on that customer. It means that there is so much dedication and determination in you. And it, it's not many people that can rise above something like what you went through. So I really applaud you for that. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if you want to answer this question, but do you have kids? Yes, I do. I have three beautiful Girls. all right so the reason i ask that is because you say you go all hours like you just continue business is always open um one thing i've learned from so many other successful business owners is one they say make sure you pay yourself and two take time for yourself take time for yourself for your family because the business does take from you it does it really takes a lot from you and the only thing that can actually replenish you is self-care now, in self-care, you might take a day off, you might go to a spa, you might go be a tourist somewhere else or be treated somewhere else. So instead of you cooking, you don't want behind the, the, the bar or anything like that, go and let someone else cater to you, right? And of course, as a mother of three as well, I know spending time with my children, they help me to 
just re-energize and you know just Very take in so. and be able to go back and be whatever those customers want me to be to them so i advise you i'm just giving you some good advice to take time for yourself um you may at some point want to reconsider a cutoff so maybe you might want to start with a very late cutoff whether it's midnight or 11 or 10 it's up to you well i've done this um oh. since the situation happened um it's because of the late night closes and that's I, another thing yeah. yes because if so we look at I, some events, I am in the business alone i had to reconsider all right awesome awesome so you see again experience teaches us a little bit of wisdom so that's good so but i really applaud you i hand over to you michelle okay great so basically the last question that we have which is what we ask all of our presenters what can we as a community do to help you and these bar and grill did you hear the question Lucilia, did you hear the question? I don't think she's on. No, I did not hear the question. I'm sorry. Okay, so my question is, what can we as a community do to help you? And well, these bar and grill. What can we do to help you? When, um, one second. When you say the community, what can the community to do to help? What community? You mean Hurdle or her community? Well, it's a general term in terms of the entrepreneurial community, the people that are listening right now. We are the okay. community. Uh, okay. So, uh, that's the question. so what can okay. we, as a community, do to help you and these bar and grill? Okay. What I would really love that you and the community and the whole to help me with is to really acquire this um spot that i am operating at right now make it mine make it something that i can call mine so if we know of anybody who has you know links and resources and of course a potential investor we can possibly get in touch with you and provide you that information because you're looking to acquire the property you said right where you are right now okay so um that is something we can definitely look into in terms of what is what is involved with the, with um, acquiring this property and how you know you can get assistance in doing that okay so i'm hoping everybody took note of that um but Celia says she's looking for assistance or any connections that she um you know can make in terms of acquiring the property um where she's at but in terms of the price um what's that price tag like so this is your goal you're trying to raise this money so that you can purchase the property. What is this ballpark price you're trying to raise though? So we can have this kind of idea as to what that amount is. Between my bailiff ships and you. Okay, I have to answer this question now. Well, this is what you're asking for. So that's what I'm saying. So what is that ballpark price that you're trying to raise? Um, you know, so do what it is that you need to do. Oh, I think the last I checked. I let me see. Can I? Can I it doesn't have to be the exact it? figure. It doesn't have to be the exact figure. Just a ballpark price of what. Can I re-answer your question? Trying. Do you want to know what I have to come up with, or what's the asking price for the property? No, just what you need. That's what I'm saying. What oh, is what I need? What um, you're trying to raise to get the property? Um, trying to raise like. $30,000. $30,000. Okay. So, um, so there you have it, community. So, Bethelia is trying to raise about $30,000 to acquire the property so that she can make it her own. So, if we know of anybody, any connections that we can, you know, recommend her to, or we can put, uh, give her some advice or any potential investors who may want to, you know, help Bethelia acquire the property, please, of course, get in touch with her. Um, Bethelia, we had your um, your information up, so I'm hoping that persons took note of that. So get in touch with her if in case you have any advice on who she can get in touch with to help raise that money. Okay, so thank you so very much, Bethelia, for that presentation and for sharing your journey and your story with us. Okay, so this is the time for where we... Right. So this is the time where... Oh, by the way, Bethelia, you did, you did a really great job. I know you were nervous, but remember, 
this is your community. This is your safe space. You know, you're not pitching to anybody. This is the space where you where you feel comfortable. You're sharing with people who are entrepreneurs just like you. Because we all have a story. Okay? And I want to commend you for doing a really good job. Honestly, you did a great job. Wonderfully done. Wonderfully done. <laughs> I do myself a class. <laughs> yes, you should. Yes. So at this point in time, this is where we go into our team announcements. When I say team, I'm referring to our startup huddles in Normally, this is the time where we tell you about events, activities, that, and functions that are happening around you and that you can apply for or that you can attend. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm gonna, I have it in the, in the form of a presentation. And please let me know when you can see the screen. I'm about to share it with you right now. You know, and you can see the screen. Okay, by a raise of hands, can you see the screen? Awesome. Okay, so I'm about to go through this presentation really, really quickly. These are just a couple of startup policy Lucia announcements. Okay. All right. So first announcement is the Entrepreneurship World Cup, and that is basically called the biggest pitch competition in the world to date. And this is the second year that the EWC is open for applications. And EWC St. Lucia is the national leg of this competition, which gives you direct access to this one, EWC Global. Now, let me just play for you the promo for this particular competition. So that was the video for the EWC or the Entrepreneurship World Cup, okay? So for persons who do not know about what the EWC is about, I'll give you a brief overview. So basically, the EWC is a pitch competition open to everybody, everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what industry you're in, it is open to you. It could be for-profit, it could be non-profit. You could be idea stage early stage, growth stage. As long as your business is no older than five years in existence, then it is open for you to participate. In terms of the idea stage, persons younger than 18 can apply, okay? So then applications are currently open to St. Lucians for Entrepreneurship World Cup St. Lucia, and it closes on July 12th. Over one, over one billion US dollars in cash, and in-kind prizes to be won for the idea stage, early stage, and growth stage that's at the global level, okay? And entrepreneurs, again, of all ages. The national finals is going to be held on August 12th. That is where we select our national finalists who may be eligible to be chosen as one of the top 100 of the EWC, okay? So you can apply using Entrepreneurship World Cup Dot com or you can go to at and that's full caps ewc underscore slu in facebook and then that will take you to the ewc st lucia page for you to apply for the competition all information about the competition is on the page you can just click sign up as well and it will take you to the link where you can apply for the competition and just for you to know even if you do not move on for the next round just for applying for the competition, you will be eligible or you will guarantee basically to receive US $25,000 worth of perks from EWC Global Partners, which include Google, okay? So you definitely, I encourage you, everybody who's on this call who is an entrepreneur or a leader or social entrepreneur to apply to the EWC. Again, to get more information about this competition, the national leg, you go to at 
and that's full caps E W C underscore S L U to get more information about Entrepreneurship World Cup St. Lucia. Okay. And now we are moving on to the very next um, event that I'm going to be telling you about. It's called the Virtual Island Summit by Island Innovation. And that is a summit that is going to be held online that is in September from the 7th to the 13th. Basically, it's all about sustainable development. Anybody who is anybody who is interested in the environment and the SDG goals, I encourage you, of course, to participate in this summit. It is free and it's entirely online to anybody. If you would like to find out more information about it, you can go to virtualislandsummit.com. That is virtualislandsummit.com to register and to participate, okay? It's, um, you're gonna have a really great panel of speakers and I am really imploring all of you who have an interest in sustainable development and innovation to be part of this event. Next, we have an open call. Now, Mr. Chef Robbie has been with us. This is the second time he's sitting in with us, but we would like to hear from experts in their field. Reach out to us if you would like to engage the community and share your expertise and also your skills with our presenters. We would love to hear from you. And we have Lisa Yard. She is the individual who you can reach out to to get more information on how you can apply to become one of our expert panel. What you will be doing basically is sharing expertise, offering advice, and providing connections to our presenters. Okay, again, please contact Lisa Yard, which is our team member, if you are interested in becoming a member of the panel. Next is an open call for startups to present. We engage startups six months in operation, up to three years, in some cases up to five on a case-by-case -case basis, where we allow you to present just as what you see Bothelia did. Present your business, tell us your story, you know, let us know what it is that, what your journey is like, what your struggles are like, so that we can see how we as the community, as in the audience, may be able to provide suggestions to assist you. Okay, now how can you find out about um, getting information on how to apply? You can contact Michaela Charles Noel. She's our go-to person for connecting you with applications. Now you can also go to the Startup Huddle St. Lucia Facebook page and you click on sign up and that will take you to the form where you can apply to present. Of course, there is a criteria as I stated we engage with businesses six months in operation, up to three years in operation, and on a case-by-case -case basis, up to five years. So if you're younger than six years old, I'm sorry, you do not meet the criteria to present, and that is just the criteria that we are provided with, which we much follow throughout the globe, okay? Also, um, the other thing that you are going to be getting access to is advice from industry experts and professionals. You get access to resources, you get crowd, so you get you get solutions in a crowdfunding format. So basically, this audience here, where persons will be willing to provide you suggestions and advice on what you can do to help improve yourself and your business, this is what you're getting: free advice. And also, you can get to connect with a peer network. Once you present at Startup Huddle St. Lucia, you become a member of our peer network. And we always encourage our presenters to help others. Okay, so. Definitely, if you're interested in presenting at Startup Huddle St. Lucia, please contact us either via the Facebook page, Startup Huddle St. Lucia, or contact my Keller, Charles Noel, and she will give you more information about Startup Huddle. And we are 100% community-based, okay? 100% community-based. We're all about helping the community of entrepreneurs. We are run by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. And of course, this is your Startup Puddle St. Lucia announcement. That is it for me. And I now move on to our next presenter. And I will allow Michaela to do that introduction. Michaela? Hi. Um, um, do I get to speak to the first presenter again? That is in the first form at the end of the event. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so today she can call herself Chef Violetta Amelie. And she is a dream to reality professional lady. 
being an entrepreneur is a hard is hard but fulfilling. Having graduated from Safa Lewis School of Business, she attended many workshops and taken a wide scope of courses, including the Dream to Reality Professional Business Training course. She aims to perform her high at high levels to continue satisfactory service to her customers who are quickly becoming family. Giving back is like second nature. My liquor works with the youth and women and also donates to causes. She's passionate about her craft and wanting everyone from any walk of life to experience it. Please help me welcome Malika Amide as she shares with us what her business is about and a little more about herself. Over to you, Malika. Thank you. Is my screen being shared? Yes, we can see your screen. Yes. <laughs> my name is Malika Amide, founder of Melly's Mix It Up. I've worked in the hospitality industry since I was 14, and I am passionate about what I do and the smiles I generate. Having worked in said hospitality industry, I've realized that most servers don't get the opportunity to enjoy the same hospitality they give. At times, you want to celebrate an occasion with friends and family, but you have to choose one or two because it's too expensive to take them all out. I am located in, a, in Central Cashews, where you find a restaurant in every step you take, especially Chinese. Nellie's is a family business. It's a legacy I intend to leave for my kids. So I involve them and teach them to treat everyone as equals. Before COVID-19, I had a few more employees, which I still call on weekends or on days when I'm very busy. Most of us take the enjoyable experience of dying out for granted. Nelly's Mix It Up acknowledges that not everyone can afford to eat out at fashionable places. And so, Nelly's aim to connect the neighborhood to a dining experience with absolute guest satisfaction to help people to enjoy life by offering an affordable alternative to dining out, a place to be able to make lasting memories. Melanie's Mix It Up will give everyone the opportunity to experience this fine cuisine with great customer service and with many surprises in store. The COVID-19 pandemic has knocked a lot of people down, including me. And I understand that not everyone can afford to spend too much on eating out. So I cater to all businesses all around, students and their friends, family, nearby communities, event planners, or just about anyone looking to have a nice dining experience, be it alone or with loved ones. Right now, I reach my customers on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and word of mouth. My plan is to remodel my place so it could sell itself along with the food because ambience also sets the stage for returning customers. I realized I need to have a more online presence. Therefore, I will create a website so people can locate me faster and tell others about my experience, about their experience, sorry. What sets us apart? Every dish is prepared with a heart full of love. 
and in turn, you get to enjoy delicious food and at affordable prices. The food is always fresh and hot. You can even call in advance to order. You will not believe that if I ever do run out of that magic sauce, my customers would go on. But I've learned my lesson. I love what I do, and so it shows in my dishes. I try to let customers experience great exotic dishes that have them experiencing the world without ever leaving St. Lucia. And every day, they come looking for something new. My menu is set so that they can change it up at will. I would like to mention the Startup Hurdle team, especially Michelle Samuel, who is currently my mentor following a Dream to Reality course. This woman is a force of fire. Taking this course has gained me the most allies and resources to better understand myself and my business. I would like Melly's Mix It Up to stand out above the rest by giving my customers a place that is inviting, a place where family and friends can hang out. I want them to first eat with their eyes before they even bite into one of our delicacies. We should get more customers to our doors. As I said before, more of an online presence, getting funding and creating a selling strategy. I want to thank you all for your presence and I welcome any feedback, questions, suggestions, and advice that would help with Melis on the map. Right now, COVID-19 has a lot of businesses as hostages, but I'm a fighter and I'm determined to be ready to keep giving my customers the best of the best. Finance is indeed the biggest need for me. I may look like a Chinese, but I don't want the misconception that my place is. Thank you. Malika, that was an awesome presentation. Ah! Oh, sorry, everybody, sorry. Um, you, you will not understand what this elation is about, but uh, this young lady has come a long, long, long way. A long way. Malika, I'm proud of you. I am so proud of you. My goodness. I don't know how to say it again. Ronetta, join me in here. I am so proud of you. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Malika, can you put up the photo of your logo your, and um, the stuff that you had previously? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Is there a way we can still see your face though? Is there? I'm using my phone. That is why. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay. All right. Well, everybody take a, take a mental photo of this, a mental, mental, mental snapshot of this. And uh, okay, great. All right, Malika, you can remove it now and let's go into Q&A with you and Chef Robbie. Thank you for that presentation, Malika. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, sorry. Okay, how do I come out of this thing? <laughs> Even allow me to move. Okay, let me see if I can help you there on my end as well, Jen. Okay. Okay. But in the meantime, okay. let's are, just... are you are you guys are doing that? You can start with your Q and A though. Michelle now is can you, can you help me to stop sharing. For the panel, right? right? There you go. There you go. Yeah, right now it's Q and A time with the panel and my girls. Yeah. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, and I guess you've lost your nervousness. Yes, to an extent. You com you're comfortable now? It's all over your presentation. Yes, all over. Thank you. Right, <laughs> all right your presentation was very very dynamic as your, your colors and your food displays were very vibrant and you know that that says a lot for the effort that you've put into it 
Um, they say people eat with their eyes, and if I were to, based on the, 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 the visuals that you showed there, I think I would be enticed to come check out your place, okay? So that's, that's, that's a good start. Um, <clears throat> uh, your, your, um, I don't quite get your comment on, your, on the Chinese. You, you, seem, you, th you, you look Chinese or something? Yes, I look Chinese, like, and my like, place was also a Chinese before me. So people still mistake my restaurant for a Chinese place. Oh, okay. So it used to be a, it used to be a Chinese restaurant. Yes. Okay. And, that's cool. but, and, but, and, and you and you would not like to. Does 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 your food reflect anything Chinese in it? Nothing. No Chinese. Nothing at all. Strange yeah. enough, I am I, I am a I am a besides being a chef and whatnot, I'm a foodie. I like food. I like variety of foods. I like I like variety. I like um I like mixes. And you said you you call your place a uh, mix up. Yes. I I like the idea of mixing different um cultures on my plate. For example, I think Oriental food, if you want to refer to it as Chinese food, is very nice food, and I think it mixes really well with West Indian food. There used to be a restaurant in New York called Nakasaki's. The guy was Jamaican and his family background was Oriental. And he, and he had, and his restaurant was based on Oriental and West Indian food in it. I thought it was a fantastic mix. I used to, I used to frequent the place just because of, you know, the, 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 the mix up, as you call it. You know, I, I could get West Indian, I could get a little Oriental flavor in there. And, you know, whatever had the flavors he mixed up, you know, if it's, he had a father who was Portuguese, so there was a little Portuguese kind of touch to it also, which is pretty, was pretty interesting. So uh, though, 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 I wouldn't, you know, push that away too far, the idea of, you I, know, I love to get, try get, 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 get in a mix in. Their products. So. So you, you said you're from a culinary background, you did the, you did the course at Sarafa? No, I, I did business management at Sarafa, well, actually. Business management. Okay, that, that, that's a good addition to somebody who has gone into culinary arts because a lot of chefs aren't business-minded and, and they, they fall short there, you know, when it comes to their food cost and, you know, expenditure and, and making good financial decisions in their business. Um, for example, me, I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible businessman. I am I'm a fantastic chef. I know how to make a lot of money from from little bits of food or inexpensive food and that sort of thing. But you know, but if I had a good business background, I'd have probably been successful a lot longer because I think I wasted a lot of time, you know, on on, on bad decisions. You know, I enjoy giving people value for money, and sometimes I give too much, too much. value for money. Yeah, yeah. So it's good that you're a business business minded person. Um, you both, both panelists seem to, um, have little financial constraints and I would give both of you all that same advice. Um, am I going to be speaking to the other, um, panelists along those lines also? Questions and answers? Well, you're going to be speaking one-on-one -on -one with them in the first forum. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to have another one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with this young lady. Yes. So I shouldn't go into much depth. Well, in terms of anything just for her as only, that should be safe for the course forum. But anything that we, that is open for everybody else to hear, that's what mm. we can discuss in front of her. But if there's anything that you wanted to focus on that you don't want everybody okay. else to hear, then you leave it for the course forum session. I'm, I don't mind everybody hearing it. don't make a difference to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I am... Um, your location have you have you um decorated it is it is it um sitting everything in place i just saw an empty hall yeah it's that's due to protocols put in place i had tables and chairs and tablecloths uh, and center pieces so and not, stuff okay. so yeah you're going for your covert thing okay cool yes um i think that i think yeah, your sign is a very very vibrant sign i think i'm actually you know kind of jealous of it i wish i'd come up with that very nice idea if you have the M and all the vegetables. And your mix up, where did you get that from? You took you took that mix up from the song? No, it just because hmm? when I first started my business, I started with smoothies. So okay, and I you started, mixed up okay. everything together. I know so mixed up was a very was a very big hit down there and people tend to, you know, ride on things of that nature. All right then. 
maybe if you're doing an advertisement, you can um, probably think about using that song in it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, for budget budgetary constraints, I um, I think that you could probably you know look into into getting a loan because I think loans are going to be very very accessible now with the COVID thing that has just gone by, and um, they're going to be very low cost loans available. And it puts you in a good position as a young enter entrepreneur. So we'll probably look into that as soon as possible because a lot of them are going to be available now because they're trying to give everybody a kickstart again to get to get started up. It's unfortunate that um, you have to be starting up a business in, in such an atmosphere with this COVID thing there and everybody being, a lot of people being employed. It's, it's cut down the market drastically. So you're going to have to come come step up your game you're going to have to um, have think of ways of making money with, with those inexpensive items, and you know because it's, it's, the times are going to be hard right now. Okay, variety is also variety is also important because people like to have choices. So you need to keep that in mind when we speak one on one. I'll probably go into a little more depth than that. You need to think about your your, your the drinks, food and beverage. They go hand in hand. And people, you know, a lot of people, you know, seem to, well, seem to think, well, you know, it is the, the the thought of the thought pattern is that drinks you have a bigger profit margin on drinks, so I wouldn't want you to neglect that aspect of things. So you need to give that some serious thought. How you're going to handle that also? Um, your marketing. How do you market presently? Well, right now I have a sign outside my door or WhatsApp, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram. Okay. What about I missed a lot of talking in from somebody else sending them. All right, great. I I missed out on work on on your location. Where are you located? I'm on the chaussee, actually, across from Courts, the gas station area there. Oh, so you're in the heart of town. Yes. All right, fantastic. So we have two different um client um presenters there. One who is in the in the depth of the countryside and one who is in the heart of town and so you all have different dynamics so i guess i'd have different different recommendations for you both um so you you actually really well well located you're in the heart of town you in an area where you know you have access to a lot of clientele but you have the disadvantage where you have a lot of competition and people have a lot a lot a lot of choices all around you. Okay, I'm even. I'm even your competition. Yep, you are. <laughs> when, you, when you think about it. <laughs> um, your you. How many staff do you have presently? Presently is myself and my two boys. Your two boys, your sons. My sons, yes. Fantastic. Your your mother of two. Great. Well, so I'm you have a family three, business, three. pretty much. You what? I'm a mother of three, three boys. Okay, great. Congratulations. I love kids. Thank you. Um, so you need to um, think about training, training them really well for customer service because customer service is first and foremost in everything. Because, you know, we're considering that you're in the heart of Castries where you have so much competition, you're going to need to stand, stand, you know, stand out a bit. You're going to want need people to come back to your business, not just for your food, but for the atmosphere, for the the customer service that they get. You know, people come back. You know, people may have a bad drink experience, a bad food experience, and and they but they would still come back to your place and give you a second chance if you if your customer service stands out. Okay, so and so, and that's and that's key. Okay, um, what. Who do you, who, who who do you think your immediate customers are, or from you know past experience? My immediate customers are the businesses that are directly around me, like Courts, the gas station, SNS, the, the stores, the Syrians. Mostly my suppliers as well. The place I go shopping, they're the ones who actually come back <laughs> to buy my products. Okay. All right, great. Um, so what 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 need do you think you're filling in in in, in the area that you are? Um, the area before that I am answer, Malika, just before you answer, Malika, sorry, um, just letting you guys know that the time is actually up for this segment, so I'll allow you to answer it, but this is where we have to cut off for this segment. Okay, cool. 
the, the need that I'm providing is the, the, my prices. I'm very affordable and you could get something that's filling for not that expensive. Okay, cool. All right, then let me, let me let them go on to the next segment to do whatever it is. You're rushing, I'll, I'll, you're I'll, I, will, I will get back. No, it's not a rush. I will get back to you. And also, you could also, um, like the lady I did in the last panel, the cheesecake lady, I, didn't, I haven't got to meet the other lady yet. I, I purchased them from her once before being a judge on the, you know, when she presented. But the cheesecake lady came to see me and we sat down for, for a pretty lengthy time and I gave her a bunch of ideas. I haven't gave her some samples of what I do and some nice ideas for her cheesecakes. And she took the advice and she's put them into action and she's doing pretty well. And some of the ideas that I've given her have been big hits on her, on, on her cheesecake list. Okay, so when we do get to speak one on one, I will give you as much advice as I possibly can right here. But you can also feel free to come sit with me at my at my location when you're right in town, and I will I'm, give you I'm a well. I've been there a couple of times myself. Okay, so I'll be happy after we've done this to sit with you one on one anytime to give you a lot more ideas and, and put you lead you in the right direction. Okay, then thank you very much. All right, I'll speak to you later on. Awesome. And now we move to questions from the audience. So now this is your time to ask for your questions or to offer advice. We have a question from Wendy. Wendy, please introduce yourself, the company or agency you represent, and go ahead with your question. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody, and good evening, my life. Um, I, I noticed that there's differences in pronouns. Okay, Malika. I wanted to be sure that I pronounced it properly. Um, I, I want to, to affirm you for your presentation. Very well done. And Thank like you. Chef Robbie said, you have a, a, a logo that really stands out. And you need to make even more use of that logo. You said something about um, people eat with their eyes before they even taste. Yes. And so it's not a question that I have, but it's just an advice that since you have said this, and it is really true, that now more than ever, you need to increase your online yes. presence. Yes. I have realized that um, for myself, it, oh, I don't think I said what I am. I mean, my, uh, the business is delicious cheesecakes. I'm sorry, <laughs> Michelle did say to introduce myself. But I have realized that especially since covid I have made a concerted effort to increase my online presence. I try to post at least three to four times a week on my social media pages. And this has caused persons to engage with me, ask questions and subsequently purchase. So I would strongly suggest that you use those free, pay, those free um, social media avenues as a means of getting persons to taste with their eyes even more because persons are online more than they were before. And then I'm sure that you're gonna get increased business. So that's my little advice to you. Thank you. Any more questions for Malika? And I just wanted to, in, I just wanted to say here that the lady that Chef Robbie just spoke about, the cheesecake lady, that was the lady that just spoke there. So I just wanted to, to, to say that. So Chef Robbie gave us a really great advice and I can attest to that. She also stated, that because of the advice she got from Chef Robbie, her sales went up. So that definitely shows that there is really great stuff happening. Um, any other questions for Malika? Okay, we have a question from Anita. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Malika, I noticed you seem to have a, a humorous approach to life. So maybe you can think of having comedy included in your offerings at your restaurant. You might be okay. surprised it might attract customers. That was a good joke about the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> so you can include that <laughs> in your offerings. <laughs> Thank you. I have a comment. Um, great job, Mylika. Uh, you. Your People eat with their eyes first. That 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 line that you use, it really sounds nice as the slogan for 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 um Melly's mix it up. Um, also, your food it, it it is great, 
because my husband does not like smoke herring. And one day when he ate the smoke herring wrap, I think you did. Oh my yes. goodness, he came for more. So that 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 is good. And um, the mix that you do with the local and all of the other um, um, types of food, that is good. And I'm pretty sure that you're gonna get great um, advice from Chef Rob. So keep it up and continue the good work. Thank you. Okay, we have a, a raised hand from um, Marvin. Yeah, hi. Um, so I just wanted to find out, Malika, would you be, sorry about the noise, would you be doing deliveries? Because I know you honestly make some awesome food and I love ordering from your place by my, well, when I'm at work. So I don't know if you'd be doing deliveries or would, how could we um, get food delivered to us at this COVID time? Well, right now with deliveries, it's just like immediate places because we do it by food. I'm not mobile as yet, so I cannot go too far around the city. So we've been my boundary. Awesome. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And um, we, have a, we have a very special guest with us. And um, I'm going to quickly permit him to say something because he cannot remain on the call with us, although I would love to have him stay for the remainder. He cannot stay. So I'm going to allow him to, um, to say his, his couple of words you know, to the presenters and, of course, everybody else here. And um, his name is William. William, can you please um, unmute yourself? And of course, introduce yourself and let them know why you're here. Hello, hi, my name is William. I'm joining in from Nairobi. Nairobi is in Kenya, uh, East Africa. And it's really great being here, hearing the, you know, the vibrant energy coming from the Caribbean and I, I think I liked the presentation from the last Cerulea. Yes. And uh, I just had one question. You said you, you work with your two sons. I mean, that to me is really great. Of course, it allows you to do things quickly in the onset. But uh, my question is, what kind of challenges do you face? Because sometimes I kind of think, Working with family can also come with its own challenges. What, what kind of challenges and how do you work around them? Like challenges in terms of working with my family or on a whole? Yeah, and, and, and especially your son for that, for okay. that kid. Well, um, there is a having to drag them out of bed in the morning and tell them it's time for work. <laughs> and sometimes they think that they know more than you, but we, we have a pretty good relationship. Okay. My, but my youngest, he's 15, he's the one who's at the front, and he jokes most times that he gets more tips than I do, because I don't get any tips, you know, <laughs> get all the tips. But it's, it's hard working with family, because most times they don't respect you as a set entrepreneur or boss, they see I you know, as well. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things get pushed under the rug. It makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. I mean, for me, I think you would have to think about uh, that, definitely, as you grow. And uh, of course, there are other things about how easily you're able to produce what you sell, because I think in food, it's a question of how, how fast you're able to dispense more than how good your food is at, time, at times. I mean, if you look at some of these big chain, uh, what they sell is easily dispensable and they come up with very simple recipes. So if you get too complicated, then it uh, affects your ability to scale or ability to grow big and open more food outlets because it's very specific and depends a lot. Uh, and of course, from what I hear, people seem to like uh, your mixes. And uh, congratulations to you and to the other presenter as well. It's nice to meet all of you. Uh, I'm really sorry, it's like uh, 2 a.m. here in Nairobi and wow. I have to go I have to go because I have some stuff to do in the morning at uh, about eight. So thank you very much, Michelle and uh, Ronita. And I think the entire team, I can't remember the names. And I'm looking forward. Hopefully I'll be able to join the next call. Thank you so much again. You're welcome, William. William. Thank you. Yeah, William actually is um, Hi, William. trainee. 
<laughs> um, we went for a training. I'm actually um, William's mentor for Startup Huddle. He just launched his own startup chapter in Nairobi. So yeah. congratulations, William. He actually visited us just to see what the online thing was like. Um, so William, I'm hoping that you can join us again for another event. And of course, yeah. have your team join us as well. So we will be catching up um, yeah. later and then giving you some more tips and, and tricks on how to host your online events, okay? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, so thank you very much. And also, I think uh, I didn't mention, I participated in the last EWC, and I think you should too. The, the people who are in this call and are looking to participate, it's really amazing. It's huge. It's very huge. Thank You're you going to learn plug, a lot. To have you. Please apply. Thank you for that plug-in. Thank you. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Bye, William. Okay. Um, we had Ronetta's hand up. So, Ronetta, we go to you. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, it's not a question. I just want to say that I am so proud of Malika uh, for doing such a wonderful job. I heard your passion and I love your creativity in your food. I can never forget your lentils burger. Yes. Um, but I just want to offer, I'm very impressed with the fact that your sons are there with you. Um, as a mother, that is very dear to my heart. And I myself, I'm raising my little boy to be business oriented and he, he he has it in him so i'm going to be just supportive just the same way you are so i would like to offer my services to you um to train your boys in customer service so i'll be offering free customer service to you i know it may be difficult i know you have the customer service background as well but like you rightfully said sometimes people don't respect you because of the relation that you have with them so i am going to offer my time to you on an afternoon being that we're so close to train your boys um, in customer service. And of course, I agree uh, in terms of your social media presence. So I can train them in marketing as well. So just to give them the basic marketing. So in addition to helping you at the shop, they could have uh, better customer service and they can help you market your business as well. So I'm offering that to you. Thank you. So we'll talk about it. Yes. It's exciting. Okay, awesome. So do we have any questions for Malika? Anybody else? All right, so we can go to, well, basically your presentation did state um, what you needed from the community, Malika, and you had basically a list there up of <laughs> the items that you needed. It's like a shopping list for the community. So Malika, in terms of the, the item on the list that you would say have the most priority, the thing that you are most in need of, like, like now, what item on this list in terms of what you need now that us as a community can do to help you get? What do you really need? <laughs> because we can't have with everything on the list. Patronize, patronize. I think is the, the part where I, I need to actually make a place look like it's mine. So it's going to feel like mine. So I'll say um, the remodeling part of the front. Okay, so you need help in terms of um, the idea for the layout or the actual construction work. What exactly? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a plan because I want my, I had the, the idea of the comedy as well. And my son thinks that he could just, you know, when I have a little crowd just pop up and sing, you know, what times when people are just sitting there and waiting for their food. But I wanted my wall to be like a 3D concept where people could actually take pictures and, you know, interact well so they're not eating yeah okay i get what you're saying so basically you have a plan already set out you just want to kind of um do some decor and yeah. place you know look not chinese you know yes. I, I, okay i get what you're saying all right so if we have any creative people in the audience anybody who is uh really great with ideas on decor for design i know we have somebody here who does events you know and who does their call. She's on the call right now. I don't want to call her out. I don't want to put her on the spot. She's actually one of our last presenters. So I'm going to let her say her piece with regards to what she can possibly do to help you with that, Malika. 
So, I'll allow her to do it. Hi, Malika. Amanda here. Hi, Amanda. I will pass by and we'll talk. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye-bye. There we go. That's what we like to hear. I'll pass by and we'll talk. This is an event planner, a lady who does decor. That's a profession. So these are the types of things that we're talking about, ladies. You know, helping one another. Right? And Malika, I'm also available. My kids love to do work, so we can come and help out. Just let us know the date, the time. And um, once we're available, we'll come down and help you with whatever. Because they love to do graffiti. If you want to do graffiti, I can. you can hire them. Do graffiti on your walls. That's what they do best. So we're there for you. <laughs> All right, so if there's no other questions from anybody, um, basically this is the, the end of our Q&A from both sides of the expert panel and of course the audience. So now we move into um, our vote of thanks and um, that is going to be done by Lisa. While this is being done, there is a poll that we have. It is like a little online questionnaire for everybody. Um, just to give us an idea as to what you think about the presenters and also um, the event itself. I'm going to be posting up the poll there. Okay, so when you see that poll, just answer the questions really quickly and the information gets back to us. You should see that poll popping up now and just really 10 quick questions, you know, posting out there to you. Okay, so um, while you're doing that, I'm gonna allow Lisa to do our vote of thanks. Um, our two presenters, please remain on the line. After everybody is dismissed and leaves, you have your one-on-one -on -one intimate session with Chef Robbie, Lothelia, and Malika, okay? So after the okay. vote of thanks, we have um, thanking our sponsors and everything else, and then we move into dismissal of everybody, saying thank you, and then our closed panel session. All right, Lisa, our vote of thanks. Hi, everyone. Michelle, I cannot put the video on. If I do, my phone will shut down. <laughs> So quickly, I will have um, to say a few thank you shout outs. First of all, to the Global Entrepreneurship Networking for giving us the license to host this program in St. Lucia. We'd like to say thank you also for the Entrepreneurship Readiness Program for providing the online pitch training course for our presenters. Good job, ladies. The expert panel for agreeing to be part of this event. Great job, Chef Robbie. I'm so sorry that um, Chef um, Paul was not able to make it. For whatever reason, I really, I really thank her for her support in just agreeing to take part in this event. A special thank you to our guests, all the way from Ethiopia, from Kenya, sorry, William. I really pray and hope that um, his chapter does wonders for him in Kenya. I'd like to say a thank you also to the audience who's attending this event. And again, to the presenters for their hard work. I know it's not very easy standing up um, in front of a crowd wherever, wherever it may be and saying exactly what you do. But thank you, ladies, for your time, your effort, and your nervousness. I'd like to say a special thank you also to the team of Startup Puzzle St. Lucia and also to Michelle for that determination um, in inspiring us to stick with her through it. Thank you very much, ladies, presenters, panel everybody else okay awesome thank you lisa for that vote of thanks and um last but not least i just want to say um this basically is what our staff of huddle signature sessions are about we are about engaging with persons that are in our own communities whether it be close by to you or in your own geographical region your country and how we can support one another okay now, the next Sata Puddle St. Lucia event is going to be held in August. As I said, it is the second Wednesday of every month. So our next event is going to be held on the 12th of August. Again, that's going to be held on the 12th of August. We have two other presenters, and these are also ladies who recently um, finished the first phase of the Dream to Reality Professional Business Training course. This is part of the, the training that they're doing. So after they're finished doing the course, they present, they do public speaking. So it's, it's basically helping to build their self-confidence and also helping them to, pre, um, to prepare themselves for when the time comes to then pitch in front of a, a potential investor. Okay, so again, our next event is going to be held on the 12th of August. It's gonna be from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. online via Zoom. You will get to know who those presenters are, of course, when you visit our Facebook page. Their details will be posted there. 
and also the flyers are going to be shared as well. So of course, please register in advance so that you can get the notifications and you'll be on time for our next event, okay? And of course, this is where we say thank you, thank you, thank you for attending another Startup Puddle St. Lucia event, actually a virtual Startup Puddle St. Lucia event. And we hope to see you again next month. Thank you so much for coming. Does anybody have any final words before they leave? This is where we dismiss. And then we have our separate session with just the presenter and of course, well, the presenters and of course our expert panel. Any last words from anyone? Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. Have a blessed evening and we hope to see you next month. Bye. Bye, team members. I love you. Great job as usual. We'll keep in touch. Bye. Bethelia, my liquor, and Chef Robbie, please stay on the call to do your one on one. Who am I going to be speaking with first? Okay, one moment. Let me just ensure that everybody else has left the call before we start. So, um, Chef, basically, you can start with whoever you, you wish to. You basically, you know, I'm running the show at this point. Um, let it me doesn't matter. I mean, whoever is, of it, whoever is first. Okay, Nidia, um, thank you for joining us. Jackie, thank you for joining. We'll see you next month, hopefully. <laughs> God willing. Thank you for joining, Jackie. All right, okay, so you basically have um, the floor now, but I'm going to end the recording at this point because this portion is not supposed to be recorded. Okay, so I'm going to end the recording now.